Greetings, YouTube. My favorite game of all time is 3.5 Dungeons and Dragons or the Pathfinder system, arguably known as the D&D uh, &D 3.75. And how this game handles weapons is something I've always enjoyed. It breaks the weapons into three main categories, simple, martial, and exotic. Simple weapons are the kind of thing that anyone who even has a passing understanding of combat can use. Martial weapons are the sort of things that armies train people in using, and exotic are the strange things, the really unusual stuff. Now the problem lies in the fact that the game uses two different definitions of the word exotic. The first definition of the word exotic is something which is mechanically superior, and that definition, as far as the game is concerned, makes perfect sense. If the weapon does more damage, or has a longer range, or a better critical uh, threat range, or does some unusual shtick, you know, it deserves to be in the exotic category, takes more training, you have to take a feat to learn it, I got no problem with that. The second definition of the word exotic is kind of the colloquial definition. It means unusual or strange. Weapons that are kind of out of their, uh, their comfort zone. Since D&D is arguably a European setting, if a weapon is Asian or South American or something like that, or Australian, it's considered to be exotic. And that's the problem. So, if a sickle in Europe is a simple weapon, and it should be, it's a gardening implement, an agricultural tool for harvesting plants, it is considered simple. It's dirt common. Everybody in the world has seen them and knows how to use it as a weapon, pretty much. Yet a comma, K-A-M-A, -A, is the Asian version of a sickle. It's the same size, it has the same style blade, though it's a slightly different shape. It's used the same way in every banner. It is the same tool, it's just a slightly different design. And yet, because it's from Asia, it's exotic. It makes no sense whatsoever. Now some people will say, well, it's a monk weapon, so it has to be exotic. Well, how about we just say there's a piercing monk weapon, a slashing monk weapon, and a bludgeoning monk weapon. And if a monk uses one of these, they can use their flurry of blows, and each round they can choose to use one special ability. They can disarm with it, or they can trip with it, or, but they can only use one of those per round. Okay? Problem solved. Does it matter what the weapon looks like? Every single monk can have their own version. The player can describe what theirs looks like. It could be thematically based off of uh, sea shanties. It could be a bailing hook and a belaying pin. And you know what I mean? It can be what fits that monk's school of martial arts that makes the player feel that he's got input in the, in the game. But if you're just going to tell me that something is supposed to be exotic because it's from way over there, and yet it's mechanically, physically exactly the same as a weapon from right here, I don't understand that. It's like saying a longsword made in Britain is different from a longsword made in China. They're both longswords. They do the same damage, they weigh the same, they're used the same. One is not exotic over the other. They're the same. A sickle and a comma should be both viewed as simple weapons. They should not be looked at as being strange just because one is from way over there. Another issue is like, for example, the sling is considered a simple weapon, even though it's mechanically simple, it's physically simple. It's a two pieces of string in a little pocket. It's very hard to use. It takes a lot of training, whereas a crossbow, mechanically complex, simple to use. Firearms in D&D tend to almost always be listed as exotic. But even a primitive early firearm is no more complex than a heavy crossbow. And a heavy crossbow has a gun stock. If you know how to use a heavy crossbow, you give me an hour, I can train you to use a firearm. Yes, it's going to take you some training to get good with it, but within a month, I can make you a critical threat to the guy downrange. Okay, it's not going to take you years of training. Not like a longbow. The old saying goes, if you want to make a great longbowman, Start with the grandfather. It takes a lot of training to be good with the longbow. It doesn't take a lot of training to be good with a crossbow or a rifle. Or a musket, I should say. Rifles are much later. 
Um, but almost always, firearms are exotic, and they shouldn't be. They're dead simple to use. If crossbows are simple, so should be firearms. Again, because it's unusual, it falls into the category of exotic, even though mechanically, physically, it isn't any more complex than a heavy crossbow. So it's this kind of schizophrenia around the definition of the word exotic, I think, that causes some confusion and makes things less than clear. Um, it could really have used some better articulation in the game. It, you know, it, it could have been well served if they had decided we're going to use the definition of exotic as just dealing with weapons which are mechanically superior to martial and they would have been much better off. Look at what the weapon physically is, look at what the weapon physically does, and then base the rulings off of that. Not that one's European and one's Asian or one's South American or Australian or, or what have you. Just because it's from a faraway place doesn't mean it's different. It just means it's a slightly different style. A club is a club is a club. Okay? They're one-handed most of the time. You can throw them. Cool. Some of them are two-handed. Cool. We've got that already covered, you know? You don't need to reinvent the wheel for every single weapon just because it's from another place. Yeah, I know. You're going to say you're being a pedantic asshat. You're way worried about this way more than anybody else is. You may be right. Weapons are important to me. I love exotic weapons. Go visit my DeviantArt page. It's full of exotic weapons. They fascinate me. But it bothers me that the game has this strange fascination with using two different definitions of the same word at the same time. It causes confusion. It causes endless arguments online. And I don't think it has to. It could have been solved by only using one definition and sticking to it. So anyone out there that thinks that a sickle is exactly the same as a, com as a comma, and they should be using the same rules, guess what? You're right. <laughs>